Have you ever come across something that just stirs up this fire inside you? You feel inspired, like you can conquer the world. For about five minutes, then it's back to normal. But what if we could bottle that feeling up? Okay, so I just want to get something out of the way right from the beginning. This is not a video about habits. Instead, it's a video about different types of motivation and what we can do to manufacture motivation into our everyday life. Now, the way I see it, there are two different kinds of motivation, intrinsic and extrinsic motivation. And here's the main difference. Extrinsic motivation relies on something outside of your control. The biggest problem with that is anytime we rely on something outside of our control to get us moving, we're kind of doomed to fail. And this is why people are so obsessed with habits and self-discipline. And I agree with them. I mean, habits and self-discipline are clearly the winners when it comes to trying to create the life that we want to live. But life is messy and over time, bit by bit, we start to fall off track sometimes. I mean, think about it. Have you ever started a habit and had it going for a while? And then over time, it kind of shifts and changes and morphs into something completely different than the original goal. And usually when that happens, extrinsic motivation steps in and gently nudges us back on track. The only problem with this is that we have to wait until we encounter something that motivates us enough to get us there. So what I want to do is create some extrinsic motivation that I can actually rely on. I don't want to just wait until it bumps into me in the wild. Instead, I want to purposefully engineer it into my life. Basically, I want to take the extrinsic motivation and move it inwards. Have you ever heard of a mantra? There's a few different definitions, but here's the one I'm interested in for this situation. Lots of athletes use mantras when things start to get hard just to help realign themselves. It can help take your mind off of your churning stomach or your sore legs or whatever challenge lies ahead. Mantras are really powerful tools for this because they're simple summaries of your beliefs that can really inspire and excite you. This is really helpful, especially in something as hard as a marathon or an ultra marathon. And that's because excitement is a better motivator than discipline. Your perception of reality is not the same as mine or as anyone else's. All of our perceptions are skewed by our experiences, beliefs, biases, and just the things that we pay attention to. In fact, at any given time, you're not getting the full picture of your environment. You're simply experiencing it through the information that you can gather from where you are at the time. If I'm moving forward and I throw a ball in the air, it looks like the ball is just going up and coming back down. But to you over there watching, the ball is going up and down, but also forwards. I don't really see that happening because I'm moving with the ball. Our brains process the same experience slightly differently, so we have totally different experiences. One of the biggest factors in how we experience the world is what we decide to pay attention to. Because of this, our attention is the most valuable resource that we have control over. Unfortunately, it's also one of the most sought after resources. On a mass scale, attention turns into profit for businesses. That's why companies, especially social media companies, try so hard to distract us and keep us on their platforms. Our brains want to conserve energy. It's a survival thing. Our brain is just trying to keep us alive. And because of that, our default brain state is to be inattentive and basically on autopilot. This is why it's so easy to fall into a routine. It also means that most of the time, we're not actually making a conscious choice about where our attention is going. It's sort of automatic. What's really interesting is that people who are naturally optimistic tend to have more positive experiences. This is because that's what they're expecting. They're paying attention to it, so that's what they end up experiencing. People with more pessimistic dispositions, on the other hand, tend to have worse experiences of the same situations, just because that's what they're expecting. It's what they're paying attention to. The things that we pay attention to the most are also the things that are consolidated into long-term memory. These memories become our basis for future events. Our attention compounds over time, so the way we show up in the world actually tends to be self-confirming. If we tend to naturally pay attention to things that we don't really want to anymore, it takes a lot of conscious effort. In essence, our lives are composed of the things that we pay attention to. And this is where, again, mantras can be useful. They allow us to focus our lens on the right things. The things that we actually want to pay attention to. 
The act of repeating the same phrase over and over again reinforces the idea in our minds. The more we think about something, the more concrete it becomes, and the more we start to consider it part of our identity. Mantras also take advantage of recency bias. This is a cognitive bias that favors recent events over historical ones. More recent events are perceived of as of greater importance in the mind. By repeating something frequently, we can assure it's always top of mind, which makes us more likely to act in accordance with that idea. With any sort of analysis of how the mind works, it can always be difficult to distill that into actionable steps just because of the abstract nature of that sort of information. Everybody's a little bit different, so you have to experiment and figure out what works best for you. But here's what I do. As I come across different phrases, whether it be in a book or in my own journaling or writing, I just write them all down in one common place. At the moment, it's just a note in my phone that's pinned to the top. I revisit this list pretty often, and I just kind of pick a phrase that resonates with whatever I'm dealing with at the time, and think about it. There's a handful of them that just kind of play on repeat in my mind. Others I've decided to display as reminders to myself, and I actually plan on doing a whole lot more with this, because I'm redoing my office space right now, so I'm going to try and include more phrases and mantras. Just because I think that your environment tends to determine your actions, so I want to fill my environment with more things that I want to become. Whatever you decide to do for yourself, I think it's important that we revisit these mantras often. If our habits are the engines of our behavior pushing us forward each day, then these mantras are kind of like the tracks. And I think it's important to check the tracks every once in a while to make sure that we're still going the direction that we want to be going. We can go far and we can go fast. But it would be a shame to look around in a few years and realize that we'd been going in the wrong direction the whole time.